So, Michael, uh, let me ask you something. When you mm-hmm. woke up this morning, did uh, did it seem like just any other normal day, or was there something uh, special in the air? You know, every Sunday has a little something special in the air. A little yeah. bit? A little bit. Nothing out of uh, the ordinary today that you were feeling? Didn't feel like, uh, you know, something momentous, uh, something historic was about to happen? I think there was a little paprika, you know, a little paprika, a little pinch. I don't know if there was like a, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, the, 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 the cap came off the paprika and it all started coming out. That's what this happens right now. We start right. talking here. That's when I start getting a whiff of the paprika, like legit, right? Now right? I wake up in the morning, I go, is that paprika? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, then what we if get I... here and we start cooking. What if I told you, Michael, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, uh, that that smell of paprika that you were smelling this morning mm-hmm. was the smell of legends being made. Would you believe That would me? make sense. Would you believe me? Because we I, have... I have to. We have a legendary intro today on the Photography oh. Brothers. My We're going to have to bring the guitar out for this one. Okay. It's going to be hard to... Oh, crap. I already hit it against the wall. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be hard we're gonna get it in here I think this is pretty good setup now uh, don't worry about that hitting the wall part um, that was that was all VFX Masha this is how people ideally like to play the guitar actually this is the yeah. ideal way all right here we go here we go so uh, we're gonna need <laughs> this is the ideal way yeah with a bunch of microphones and wires around everywhere you got no room it's pretty much uh, ideal I read that I, re- I saw that uh, on a uh, guitar YouTube channel earlier I thought yeah actually the, the way you yeah do it. all right here we go Sydney cut that intro and let's get into the real intro to the show right now here I am Podcast with my photo bros. Here I am. Podcast with my photo bros. There you go. There you go. If I knew, I would have brought out my lighters, man. If I knew. It's all good, all good, all good. All right. Stunning, stunning. That is good content. That is the definition of good content. All right. So that was uh, was a proper intro for episode 13 of the Photography Brothers, I think, I hope. I am your photography brother, Jared Poirier. And as you can see, I've been drinking a lot of coffee today. And I'm very excited because (laughs) I am here with my main man over on the ones and twos, wearing the green. Mr. Michael Costa, how you guys doing? Mr. Michael Costa, content celebrity, Michael Costa, blowing up, blowing up on YouTube right now. And uh, <laughs> what, why, why don't we start the episode by uh, letting everybody know of uh, of Michael, the Michael Costa YouTube uh, successes and the journey. Okay. The okay. updates, so. the Michael Costa update. <laughs> I um. So, okay, like I love, so I love music. I've had this idea of reacting to music for a while. So I started a channel late last year and uh, my cousin the other day was like, man, you got to react to some K-pop music. Like, I don't really know anything about K-pop music. He's like, oh, well, here's some songs. So I did a reaction video, reacted to BTS, ATs and Blackpink and the video got 20K views. And so now I'm riding this wave till it dies, pretty much. <laughs> that's crazy, man. That's crazy. And, th- and that's why we're yeah. super excited to tell everybody about our new podcast, mm-hmm. K-Pop Brothers. Yes. So Michael and I will be, uh, will be bringing you guys probably a whole network at some point, you know. We've got a lot of podcast ideas, um, you know, some, uh, some K-Pop. Maybe we're going to do like an anime podcast, just everything where we really have no, uh, no idea what we're talking about and absolutely no legitimacy. I think those are really the spaces, uh, we're going to do like a wedding planning podcast, uh, <laughs> ex- new, new mother, new mother podcast. New, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually also there was a, a woodworking, uh, podcast, uh, called you, me yeah. in my wood. Um, nice, nice. also, wow. um, a deep, <laughs> deep, deep. 
Wowie. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, it'd be great segments like Deep in the Cedar, um, you know, Against the Grain. Uh, but, you know, we Classic don't want to spoil segments. everything here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We want to, yeah, we want to, we want to leave a little bit up to the imagination here on the photography mm-hmm. brothers. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a, that's a bunch of nonsense. I think we should probably start to, <laughs> there's a bunch of the nonsense show? for you guys. We should probably start the show. Um, I think that we have an excellent topic. Um, probably, probably one of the best topics, you know, me and Michael always try to, uh, try to bring it on the topics. I'll be honest, this time we were a little bit, um, I'm not going to say a little bit lazier. Maybe we were a little bit later to the party than usual in terms of uh, prep and whatnot for uh, for the episode here. Uh, but not to worry, we've got uh, a great, great news story and a great topic for you guys. And uh, Michael Costa is going to be bringing the story. And I think uh, I think I've got the topic here. And uh, Michael Koss is going to let me know if this is a good topic. But I thought that it would be very interesting on this week's episode of the Photography Brothers to dig a little bit uh, into the past, into the history of the brothers, Michael and I, our careers in photography, and really get to the bottom of the resources that we used to get us to where we are today, right? So I really think that this was going to be a great one for the new photographers out there, right? Who are kind of just mm-hmm. starting out and they need a place to, you know, learn and and meet other people, right? Who uh, who they can learn from. So we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about that today. What do you think, Michael? Sounds good, man. Yeah, I think it'll also be good for um, some of the more experienced photographers as well, right? Like, yeah, even prepping uh, for this episode today, I was looking through some resources and whatnot, kind of reminding myself of the places that I used to go a lot when I, you know, needed to learn something new about photography or clarify something about photography, right? And uh, yeah, there's uh, still a lot to a lot to learn, right? Even if you've been shooting a lot, and even if you mm-hmm. are getting a lot of practice, I think it's always a good exercise uh, to go back to the basics every once in a while. And, uh, and look at some photography resources. Uh, so sounds, sounds pretty good, right? You got some resources for the people here, Michael? I do have some, some resources here okay. for the people. Okay, I've, yeah. got a, I've got a few resources for the people too. So uh, why, don't we, why don't we quick fire uh, some resources back and forth and uh, we'll be including links down in the description for you guys. Yes. Uh, Michael, you can go first, buddy. What's what's the first resource you want to talk about for new or uh, even experienced photographers? Um, so I think um, obviously YouTube is a great platform and there's a lot of resources on there that takes the form of content creators. And um, one that I want to highlight is a creative by the name of Jessica Whitaker. Um, very, very talented portrait photographer uh, based out of Seattle, Washington. And uh, she makes very, very um, useful videos. Um, A lot of them cover, you know, her on the field, taking images with the model, interacting with them, explaining what she's doing, her mind thought, her her process, mind process going through that. A lot of videos also covering um, more of the business side as she's kind of going through it and explaining uh, the different elements of of the parts that build up, you know, your your business, or or just you know, again, the creative element of it, and and how to increase your photo quality. There's one video I wanted to highlight specifically. Um, it's called Eight Easy Ways to Improve Your Portrait Photography Instantly." Really good video. It's one of those ones again. She's walking around with a model. She's talking to basically these tips are arising as she's taking the images. It's kind of a windier day. She's looking for spots to take these photos. In some occasions, it's kind of clear and obvious. There's beautiful mountainscapes, but in some areas, you know, she's even in a storage locker, kind of taking images there. It's kind of strange and interesting, but it's really cool cool to, to one, you know, see how, you know, you can use limited resources to take images and create content, but also, um, you know, how you can converse with the model, which is something that we've talked about here on the show. Sweet, man. That actually sounds like uh, an awesome one. Uh, And I always love getting some new tips on portrait photography. It's one of those things like I think 
especially portrait photography, when you kind of approach it uh, as someone who doesn't have a whole lot of experience, you kind of think like, oh, that'll be easy, you know, I'll just put it on like F4, there'll be a nice blurry background and we'll shoot some nice photos, yeah. <laughs> and then you get out there and it's like a windy day and it's like over overly sunny or the even worst, worst, uh, worst case Ontario is sunny <laughs> and cloudy, but in a way that like the cloud keeps going over the sun. <laughs> yes yeah you know so uh yeah definitely something where there's uh, a lot of room for some pretty uh pretty in-depth tips there some pretty specific tips so i'll probably check out that video myself man that sounds awesome yeah man sweet um i i really have noticed lately on the podcast i've been trying to actually say my words all the way through like probably right i i feel like i shorten it all the time probably it's probably this it's probably that you know so i'm just <laughs> Try, trying to get better at podcasting, folks, you know, always trying to improve, but just in case that was uh, ever, ever bothering you guys, you know that me and Michael here, we're always trying to, uh, to get better, not just at photography, but, but everything. At but everything. speaking. But at speaking in English. <laughs> That's, you know, I have that struggle as well. Yeah, um, oh yeah. Oh hell know, yeah. It's hard having English as your first language. It Sometimes, you know. It was, just trying to process it's words, tough, man. Yeah. It's very tough. I yep. I know, man. I used to cry. I used to cry a lot in uh, in math class, and that was probably you in English class. You know, trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to go A B C D. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'll start again. A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I've got uh, I've got another uh, YouTube channel here, and I mm. think that it really complements uh, the one that you were talking about. I mean, you're talking about more on the site tips, you know, what you're going to do yep. once you actually get out there in the field. Um, but this one is a little bit more for like learning your theory and learning your your basics of uh of how your camera works, uh, especially in like using the manual mode on your camera, which may be a bit intimidating to some people. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to highlight here a channel called Apple Apps. Uh, and I think that's one of the, in terms of like just explaining in a quick and easy to understand way, honestly, one of the best channels that I found on YouTube, they're not as active uh, these days, right? Like um, they're not posting uh, as frequently as they used to, but I still think that the back catalog that Apple Apps has here uh, is definitely, definitely, see, that's another one too. De definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, <laughs> no, I get definitely, that. Definitely one to uh, look into, right? Um, and I have another cool thing about him is uh, his voice is like really, really deep. And uh, and then you see him and he kind of looks like me. So it's kind of, if I talked in like a deep voice like this, let me tell you about the fundamentals of photography. I, I probably couldn't do it now that I would have had to like, people already know what my voice sounds like, you know? So I can't really get away with that. But <laughs> anyway, so he sounds like the guy who says the words at spelling bees. <laughs> That's yeah, that's yes, he sounds exactly like that. Kind the of word guy. is welcome to the photo bros. Anyways, um, so <laughs> some videos, some vi some videos to check out of his are his uh, videos on uh, focal length and aperture. Some really fundamental things. Uh, I mean, everybody knows what focal length means, but maybe you don't understand like all of the different elements of it and like what all of your different lenses uh, do exactly and what, what they're going to do to your image, how they're going to distort it and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, the video on aperture as well is uh, another good one all about aperture. Yeah, aperture. It's the hole in your camera. There you go. Mm. Uh, yeah, see, me and Michael, we know, we know. Uh, and then another thing that I really like about his channel is uh, all of the dispelling of very common myths uh, that he does on his channel because this is something mm. that is uh, rampant on YouTube, right? Is, you know, somebody will just kind of read a blog post or kind of misinterpret something that they've read and they'll put a video up and it'll actually be wrong and then these kind of misconceptions get proved Perpetu like uh, perpetuated um, throughout again using our English skills here <laughs> throughout the <laughs> throughout the platform. Uh, so check out his videos on uh, ISO and uh, also he has one about the exposure triangle that are really good ones to check out. But I'll just link his channel uh, down below and you guys can go and find those videos. Uh, you got another one, Michael? 
Yeah, man. Good tip. Nice. Good tip. Thanks, I think that's, that's going to be very, uh, very useful, especially that myths, uh, the myths with, uh, section mm-hmm. that you were ta- or video that you're talking about that, that the video on ISO highly, highly interesting, highly recommended. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I'm going to go check that out. Nice. Um, not right now. We're going to finish the show first. Finish so, the show first. Um, I have an article here. Um, so in general, the platform of uh, Petapixel is something that we reference a lot. Yeah. Great resources constantly daily coming out. We got great, super talented uh, authors uh, or uh, yeah, authors uh, who have great uh, articles are coming out. They're always photographers as well. So they speak from experience. So they have great tips and uh, advice for you. It's, it's um, not mojo.com, folks. It's not mojo.com, um, but there is an article specifically, if you are a landscape photographer, you're trying to spice up your portfolio a little bit, he's got a great article called 12, uh, 12 Tips for Abstract Landscape Photography. This is written by Christian Hoiberg. Um, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right, as we've covered already on this episode. English is is uh, is sort of our first language. We're working on um, it, guys. We're working on it. <laughs> you know, he talks about things like identifying details in landscape, you know, utilizing harsh light, you know, if there's water around, how you can use it and play with angles and, and utilize that reflection. He's got some very interesting ways to create abstract landscape photography. And this could be something that could really spruce up your portfolio if that's something you're really passionate about. So definitely, definitely recommend checking out that post. But in general, Petapixel is a great resource for you to go to every day, read up from other photographers that are, ex- that are experienced and are gonna teach you something. Totally, yeah. It would be wrong of us not to uh, shout out Petapixel on the Photography Brothers. <laughs> They've given right. us so much. They've given us so much, you know? They don't even know, but they have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sick website. Uh, we get a lot of our news and whatnot from uh, Petapixel, so uh, great resource, I mm-hmm. uh, totally agree with. Michael on that one. I've got a, another resource that you guys should uh, definitely check out here. Um, and this one comes from personal experience. In fact, this is probably where I learned uh, most of the things about photography and videography, camera gear, gimbals, sound equipment, blah de blah blah that I know. It, <laughs> and this is gonna sound old school, guys, and you're gonna be like, Jared, you're my photography brother, but you are grandpa. But uh, go to the camera store, guys. Go to the camera store. Mm. Uh, it's going to be hard right now with, uh, you know, the pandemic and stuff. They got, like, curbside pickup and things like that. But, uh, you know, the government's getting those vaccines out to the people pretty soon. And uh, you'll be able to go back to the camera store. Uh, things that you have access to there. Uh, a community of photographers who are, like, actually educated in photography it's their job uh not always as much as you might want them to be um sometimes you might be a little bit unimpressed by like uh some of what they know but compared to uh, a lot of stores that you could go to you're gonna get some pretty knowledgeable people and then the other thing that's just uh you know totally um totally necessary is just getting your hands on the gear right like that was a big thing for me you can do all of the research in the world But until you actually get into the store and get like the gear into your hands, uh, you know, I've done this uh, a lot of times living here in Toronto. We have uh, Henry's, we have downtown, uh, we have VizTech. If you're in the States, you've got things like uh, B&H photo and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, But but I see you nodding your head, Michael. I see you agreeing like this is a, a big thing, man. And one of the biggest reasons why I like Canon's the most is just how they feel in your hands, right? The grip, I like the feeling of the lenses and everything like that. And uh, and that was one of the reasons that like led me to getting the camera that I have. So being able to go to the camera store and physically, uh, physically hold the gear, physically take photos with it and stuff like that, I think is really important. And the other thing that you can do at camera stores, uh, especially VizTech here in Toronto, is actually rent the gear, right? And that's a real chance like, for you to get your hands on something and go and test it out, right? Like rent it for a shoot, 
that's the reason why I have a gimbal right now and not uh, a steady cam. You know why? Because I rented a steady cam and it was a horrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't waste my time buying one, right? So that's another uh, another huge thing. So yeah, once uh, once camera stores open back up, I highly recommend getting out there and uh, and learning that way. Uh, and don't go to Best Buy or like Walmart or something because those people don't know yeah. anything about cameras. Trust me, they don't. <laughs> really, they don't. You, they might you take know, you to the webcams. You know more. You know more than the people at Best Buy. Trust me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice, man. Uh, definitely something I wish I, I did a bit more of. Um, in Mississauga, things are kind of like spaced out. There, there isn't as much of a culture here as well for it. Yeah. But it, it was really nice. Like I have gone to downtown a few times, and the guys there, like if you are local to Toronto, highly recommend going there. Uh, downtown camera um they yeah like very nice yeah you can ask them questions they're going to give you their feedback their opinion professional opinion uh like jared mentioned like you can do your research once you get the thing in your hand like it's almost like you know i right now i'm kind of looking at cars right and i'm doing a lot of research on these cars but i'm still booking test drives right yeah and, you can't decide you know, between that lexus and that mercedes right now right eh? Hey, actually, the Lexus is, is gone, actually, and that's a great example <laughs> of it. I was really excited by the idea of it, got into it. Well, no, I'm uh, not not about it right now. I'm actually uh, considering the Elantra uh, N-Line okay. right now. Nice. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't have known that unless I, I uh, picked, uh, picked it up and kind of went for a drive, and it's kind of the same thing. So good piece of advice there, man. Um, my, my last piece of uh, advice here in regards to uh, tips is uh, for resources is uh, a video created by someone that you probably know of uh, if you're uh, heavy into the uh, YouTube creation space for photography. His name is Sawyer Hartman. Um, really talented guy as well. Um, creates very uh, clean, easy to comprehend videos. There's one that he created that I think especially is very, very um, valuable. And, you know, if you're somebody who is starting to create a platform, whether that's on Instagram and maybe you're, you know, you're starting to pick up your followers, maybe you create YouTube content like me and Jared, and you're starting to build a following there, you're going to want to start reaching out uh, to brands to potentially, you know, start, um, you know, receiving product and doing reviews and that kind of stuff there. So he's got a great video um, that is all about reaching out to brands and you can twist this into different ways, right? You can twist this into, hey, you know, um, I'm gonna reach out to this brand so that I can receive product to do, to create content on my channel. You can try and, and do, if, um, you know, uh, for collaboration, you know, and, or, or doing work for them. It's just a really good informative video that takes you through the different tips and steps and he walks you through the whole email. So basically, when you're done this video, you can reach out to a brand right away. Um, really good video. Also recommend checking out his channel. His, his earlier stuff, I'm going to say, was a bit more informative in regards to this the context of what we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Newer stuff is a bit more vloggy, but it's still cool. He still does talk to some of those things. Um, but... Um, that video specifically, I would recommend. Okay, sick man. This uh, this is a great idea for a video. You know why? Because I'm getting resources too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm glad we're doing this, man, for my my own selfish reasons. Um, I've got uh, I've got one more here for you guys. So my last my last one was uh, go to the camera store and learn there, and that's definitely the one that's been kind of the biggest for me. As I said, uh, this next one is more like. The, the re this next one is more like the resource that I wish that I had used more, right? Uh, and this is the photography subreddit. So Ooh. the photography subreddit I was uh, looking a lot at today. I've kind of been in and out of there a little bit as I've uh, learned photography, just checking out some of uh, the activity there. But there's a lot going on over there on... Uh, on the, the photography subreddit guys. So that's reddit.com uh, r slash r slash photography. And uh, there you're gonna find uh, quite a big active community of photographers. And uh, you know, Reddit can be a little bit iffy sometimes. Um, not <laughs> sure how much you guys have posted on there, but 
it can be a place where you got uh, a lot of sudden hate and like people just like despising you. So just be careful. It is Reddit <laughs> after all. Um, but it does seem like this particular subreddit uh, isn't very toxic and that it's a pretty open community for photographers to learn from each other. There's a lot of good uh, photography news on there. So that's definitely going to be something that definitely going to be something that uh, I check out as we prepare more episodes of Photography Brothers, uh, mm -hmm. pull some news stories from there. But there's also places for you to share your photographs and get uh, critiques from other photographers, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other resources um, and a lot of stuff around like gear and whatnot, which, you know, Michael and I are, uh, are pretty big photography gear heads. So we both like to keep up to date with all the latest and, and greatest of gear. So photography uh, subreddit is another great resource for photographers. Right, Michael? That is right. Uh, actually, I do love this tip. I didn't, I didn't think about it, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it, Reddit is such an, such an interesting, interesting platform because it is very, like, it can be very opinionated, but it yeah. is, um, largely I find at least like there's far more value than, than anything. And so mm -hmm. like, well, like Jared mentioned, if someone does, you know, post the news, sometimes you look at an article and you go, okay interesting so what what does this mean mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. what's awesome you'll have the news but then you'll have the whole stream of people commenting down below giving their opinions their takes what they think it means for the future of the industry or that company that company that brands vision um so really really uh, good insights that you're going to find in there yeah you'll get you you know you can go and read the news anywhere but uh the, what reddit is kind of offering like michael said is that uh that perspective and also like more background information right more context so that you yeah. actually know uh you know the story itself is one thing but it could be misinterpreted and you know it's good to read and read into things and get some other uh sources and whatnot um and i think that that's gonna lead us uh into our segment on the news what do you think michael i say we do it Okay, okay, okay. We are here with the news. This is Photography Brothers News, and we have a great, well, Michael has a great news story to talk about. Uh, we're going to get into it in just a second here. But first, and I promise I won't make a habit of this, but first we need to do the, here, <laughs> Sydney's got the ding ready. <laughs> the, the, NFT crypto update. Ding. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we go with the uh, NFT crypto update, and uh, we're gonna have to come clean here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Michael and I, you know, we try to uh, stay up to date as photographers and artists and content creators and uh, geniuses, prodigies. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, light lights in the darkness, and uh, ain't that the truth? Ain't yeah. that the truth? And uh, yeah. you know, I have to admit that I think Michael and I may have got, especially myself. I mean, I won't talk for Michael here. You know, this is more my fault. I think we got a little bit, uh, like many people are doing right now, on Twitter, on the blockchain, in the in the etherverse, just getting a little too hyped about these NFTs, guys, because it turns out. NFTs, cryptocurrencies, all that blockchain stuff. Guess what, Michael? What? It's freaking horrible for the environment. So, kind of a bummer here. I mean, we were pretty excited, and I'm still excited about it. Uh, I think that it's going to be, you know, it's going to require some changes and things like that. I think that it still has the potential to uh, be revolutionary for digital artists, but let's get into it here. So, so why is uh, why are NFTs specifically and the blockchain in general bad for the environment? Uh, can you guess? No, no, it sounds weird, right? When when I heard about it too, I was like, what? Like it shouldn't be because they're not shipping anything, right? Really, it's just 
uh, thing on the internet and some computers do some stuff and it should be good, right? Like, what's, yeah. the, what's the problem? They, they don't like every time uh, you post an NFT, they don't like go and punch a polar bear, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on? So, so hold on. Hold I'm on. sorry, man. <laughs> you can't cut out the, the monkey kick joke that I made in episode one. And then talk about punching polar bears, okay? We need we need to go back and pull and that out of the archive because that was in. comedy and gold, put it back man. In. Okay, yeah. go go ahead. Okay, punch polar bears. Anyways. What else you got? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was thinking too, man. Like, you know, how could it really be uh, devastating for the environment? So let's get into it here. So the problem is kind of with the blockchain in general and it has to do with all of these computers basically running all the time to maintain the network and to um you know like legitimize things on the network as we talked about earlier and the way that that works with uh bitcoin but also with ethereum is that uh, basically it's this thing called proof of work and that's how people you've heard of these like bitcoin miners right yeah. So that's basically how the net the network actually functions. Like we talked about in the last episode, let's say uh, that like Michael uh, received a thousand dollars from me, and I did it with like cryptocurrency. It would be like the um, transaction is sent to the blockchain. There's these like miners that process the transaction, and they're rewarded with Bitcoin, right? And it uh, essentially works the same way with NFTs and uh, pretty much all cryptocurrencies is this like proof of work model, right? The problem with this is that it's actually competitive. So you have a whole bunch of computers trying to solve the problem that's going to give them access to be the person who uh, processes and legitimizes that transaction, right? It's all this like kind of brute force approach and it's actually super wasteful to have all of these computers running all the time, right? So that's kind mm. of the, the issue here with that. Uh, and it's actually pretty devastating. Uh, there's been some work done, especially um, by this guy called Mimo Acton. He's been kind of on the front line of this. Uh, and then you want to look into probably uh, something that'll be a little bit more digestible is a video uh, by Ten Hundred, who's an artist on YouTube. So I highly recommend uh, checking out both of those resources. Uh, but basically, um, Mimo Acton started uh, calculating the carbon footprint of some of these NFT drops. And even a small one, man, like someone with, uh, let's say, like half a million subscribers on YouTube, right? If they were to do like an NFT drop with like the audience that they have, it would be yeah. uh, approximately 40 years of their life, like their carbon footprint in 40 years, right? They just can do all that in one NFT drop. Wow. That's like how the math works out. So definitely, uh, definitely an issue, right? And something that we should be paying attention to. Um, the solution to this uh, might be, you know, just not use NFTs and cryptocurrencies. I mean, I don't really think that that's going to be what happens. Um, what's more likely is that uh, the cryptocurrency uh, space kind of adapts to this and instead of doing the uh, proof of work model it's actually adjusted to something uh, called proof of stake and that is instead of being the per the first person to like solve the complex uh, math problem in order to uh, process the transaction and get the crypto uh, currency reward it's going to be instead that you basically stake a certain amount of money right and that's go it's like a lottery right where mm -hmm. um anybody can win but you're gonna have a better chance of winning the more lottery tickets you buy uh it would operate kind of on that level uh in which case you don't have a whole bunch of computers running mm -hmm. all the time uh trying to trying to win their ability to process uh, that transaction and get the cryptocurrency reward for doing so. So yeah, I just thought that was uh, interesting. And given the amount of like hype, I mean, both of us are, st I, I would say I'm still pretty excited about this idea, um, but definitely something to be aware of here. And, you know, we all want to uh, be successful as artists and creatives, but uh, we also don't want to destroy the planet in the process. Uh, uh, right, Michael? 
<laughs> Weird if right, you disagree man. with me here. No, you're like, no. I disagree. <laughs> this planet needs to die. Mm-hmm. Um, no, man, obviously, right? I mean, we we're just talking about landscape yeah. photography. So, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's interesting, right? Like you don't really think about how something can impact the environment sometimes just because in your head, there's no connection between yeah. the two things. So it's, it, I'm glad you brought that up, man. Like that's, that's really important. And, uh, I'm glad that I, I know that now. Thanks. Oh, and it was actually my friend, uh, Jen, uh, an artist, very talented artist, uh, who I actually used to work with. I just want to grab her, um, handle here. So J V Fryer, uh, Fryer, like a deep fryer, F uh, R Y E R. Uh, on Instagram, if you want to check out some of her digital art, she is freaking awesome, and I would highly recommend it. So thanks, Jen, for uh, for getting us up to date on that. And I think we're ready to get into the story proper, and uh, probably not talk about crypto art for uh, at least a few episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, Let's see. We'll see what happens. We won't rule it out. No promises. Um, so yeah, I mean, this one is um, not uh, a super heavy topic. It's more of an update, and uh, it's kind of an interesting one. So Adobe, you know, uh, our friends over there are are doing interesting things all the time, integrating new features, technologies into their software. Um, we have uh, an update here from Petapixel. Uh, the article is titled "Adobe's Adobe Photoshop's Super Resolution." made my jaw hit the floor. I hope his jaw's feeling all right. But um, it, so basically, uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it come on. If it hit the yeah. floor, depending on how hard it hit the floor. It sounded like, so, it was, man. It sounded like uh, yeah, pretty aggressive. That would, be, um, that would be bad for us as podcasters, right? It wouldn't be great. Yeah. Can you imagine every time we talk about NFT, I mean, if my jaw hit the floor, uh, when the floor. You, with what you just said, we already probably, barely, we can already yeah. barely get through a sentence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this start, episode has been, we start been, checking been a big out, episode. start checking out these <laughs> jaw dropping news stories, Michael. You're really, you're <laughs> risking our, you're risking our podcasting career, buddy. It is. Yeah. Jaw droppers. Yeah. What, were you going to say this is our best episode ever and totally on the rails? Is that what you were about to say? It's never been more on the rails, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good. Let's, let's get into the news topic here okay, before here I go. dig a deeper hole. So we got a new feature here, guys. It's, it's from Adobe. Um, it's, it's integrated into the ACR software. So that's your uh, Adobe Camera Raw. That is a piece of software that is integrated within a few pieces of software that you probably integrate, integrate with, um, interface with uh, on the daily. Uh, so you were talking about Photoshop, uh, Elements, After Effects, and of course, Adobe Bridge, the thing that everyone downloads and uses, right? For oh, Adobe management. Bridge is my favorite yeah. Adobe oh. product. Right. Of course. Um, so basically, they are actually building on a piece of technology that they created two years ago. Um, it was called Enhanced Details. You may have seen it. You may have played with it. Um, this is that on like the strongest type of steroid there is. Okay. So this thing's got like a 13 pack. So it is essentially using advanced machine learning um, paired with a knowledge base of millions of photos. Um, It's so like, you know, imagine, you know, it's just like benching at the gym, just like millions of photos. Meanwhile, you got, you know, enhanced details over there, just curling good intentions. Um, You know, the photographer, also the author of this article, his name's Michael Clark. He actually did something that was really interesting. He tested out the feature. And just to clarify a bit more as to what this feature actually does, mm-hmm. it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's it's essentially increasing the resolution of your image, keeping it sharp, keeping it usable. So Yeah, and I believe his, it's by four times, right? Like you can uh, go to four times as many pixels with it. That is definitely the case in, in his example here, mm-hmm. actually. So spot on, good, good point bringing that up. Um, Mr. Michael Clark, uh, again, author of the article, photographer, um, he shot a photo over a decade ago, 
Um, he used his Nikon D700, a 12 megapixel camera. Uh, it was an image of someone surfing and he used the feature. Very easy, it's like a right click and integrate kind of uh, feature, very simple to use. What he got in return was a 48.2 megapixel image that was noticeably sharp, uh, as sharp, but he thinks even sharper potentially than the original image. Um, again, this is due to millions of photos uh, as being used as a reference in the advanced uh, machine learning system that they have there. Um, really, really interesting. Now, something for you to know, obviously we, we mentioned that it is uh, utilizing the Adobe Camera Raw system uh, that we have here under Adobe, beautiful. Um, now, for you to know, for some reason, if you're not shooting raw, you should be shooting raw, but if you aren't shooting raw, you can still use your JPEGs and a couple other formats that are supported um, to utilize this feature. Um, what is, how does this strike you? Uh, uh, Jared, do you have any any images in mind? And I mean, how does this how does it strike you? Uh, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, it's not uh, it's not necessarily blowing my mind. You know, it's not necessarily dropping my jaw. Like maybe it's not dropping your jaw. Maybe it's no. not <laughs> my draw. <laughs> but you're, <laughs> you're dropping your draws. <laughs> it's not dropping my draws. <laughs> Um, oh. yeah, but it, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's kind of just, yeah. uh, an, another in the, the long line of AI, uh, advancements in photography, kind of computational photography, yeah. uh, that we've talked about here, right? Uh, things like denoising your photos using yeah. AI, uh, replacing the background, uh, getting better HDR and things like that, even, uh, to the point of like changing people's uh, facial expressions and things like that is another kind of groundbreaking thing that that's been able to uh, be accomplished by bringing uh, machine learning and AI to the table with photography. I mean, something like this, man, I think uh, it does go back to that point that you've brought up a lot of times of like camera companies pushing megapixels as like the ultimate thing and not being a justification for those mm -hmm. big price tags, you know, it being like an extra $2,000 for a camera. And then it's like, oh, why is this camera better? Oh, well, it has way more megapixels. This kind of, I think might slow that down a bit. I mean, you've got kind of an arms race going on with that right now. Uh, the Canon R5 has 45 megapixels and like that's a lot of pixels right <laughs> and then uh sony sony comes out and they're like no no we've got uh i think the the a7 IV has something like 60 megapixels or something like that yeah it's stupid yeah and uh <laughs> and and here we have uh basically an image that you could capture these days on your freaking iphone uh with 12 megapixels and then kind of using ai up res that uh, to like a 4,000 whatever megapixel thing. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty interesting and it might be something that calms down uh, the camera market a little bit. Like I don't know about you, I don't really wanna pay yeah. $5,000 for a camera body, right? So if some of these things like uh, computational photography and AI and, uh, and whatnot are going to make uh, you know, really high resolution photos, a little bit more accessible, then I think that's a good thing. But also it just like doesn't really matter that much that you're, you have super high resolution photos, at least like to this degree, right? Because guess what? You're probably posting them on Instagram or on a website. And in that case, you're not going to be posting, uh, you know, the 40 megapixel shot, right? You're going to be like editing that and posting a JPEG that's 1080 by 1080, you know? So... Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, is this going to really change things for the majority of photographers? Probably not. Uh, where it does come in handy, though, I think, like the biggest applications of this that came to my mind, definitely if you're going to be printing. Did you guys hear that? Yep. Definitely. Whoa. Whoa. That was on point. Um, you know, if you're going to be printing uh, <laughs> large scale, uh, you know, billboards and uh, bus stop things. Uh, when people yep. are walking by the bus stop there and you want to, you know, when you're waiting for the bus, you want to be able to see every hair in uh, in the eyebrow, right? And you don't want to yep. miss a single hair. On that's fleek. Where, yeah. Yes, yes. This, that's where this is going to be uh, be good for the printing. And also, I think, like, if you just have old photos um, that, you know, are from an older camera or your old cell phone, 
or you just didn't remember to save that raw file and you want to go back and maybe print something, uh, maybe do a little bit of wall art or something like that. Maybe you want to mm -hmm. do an NFT, you want to ruin the planet and you want to make sure <laughs> that you've got like the highest uh, quality image when you're, uh, when you're destroying everyone's future through your crypto hellscape nightmare future. Um, you know, you want to make sure that uh, you, you've got good pixel density. So yeah 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 no great points there man yeah i think i think for me yeah again that that point there around prints is probably the biggest uh, and greatest example of how it's going to be very beneficial to people um i think you know especially when you're you're selling prints you know it's definitely a trend that we're seeing a lot more with um with photographers where you know we're seeing a lot of the people that we admire and some of the local folks you know we're they're selling their prints um, definitely makes it a lot easier, especially, you know, uh, in using this guy as an example, you know, he shot over a decade ago on a, on a, on a 12 megapixel camera, having the ability to, to, to take some of the images maybe that you really like that you took back in the day and to enhance it and blow it up and, and not lose that sharpness um, is, is definitely a good thing to see. And I uh, definitely recommend reading this article. It's a great one. It obviously sums up what the feature is sums up you know this this guy's experience with the software and and, and um, also it does do a little bit of a walkthrough and how to use it so that is also uh, something great now from my understanding reading this article the feature is up and live so if you do want to play around with it go ahead and give uh, your adobe cloud your adobe photoshop an update and uh go play around go play around with uh some photos and uh you know, pr uh, send us a print, you know, so send Jared a print, uh, send at, me a uh, print. yeah. And, uh, he'll, it will be the backdrop of his, of his set going forward, actually. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Especially if it's, if it's got enough pixels, you know, it ideally picture of a frog, right? Ideally, you know, you know, I yeah. love my frogs and, <laughs> uh, and, and I love my frog photography. So any photography, yeah. uh, enthusiasts out there, especially, frog photographers hit hit us up on instagram uh photo underscore bros underscore podcast yes <laughs> that is the one <laughs> nice nice, nice. <laughs> all of your all frog photographers head out there and uh yeah all other uh photographers I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this episode. I think we're just about at the uh, the runtime of the old podcast here. Pretty close. Yep. Might be might be a bit of a shorter episode, but I feel like we've also uh, gone maybe a little bit overboard on the last couple. So, <laughs> well, give us, uh, a, give us a bit of a break here. Yeah, your brother. Well, we do got one more thing. One that, more thing. Uh, we got to do. We got to highlight a creative. Woo. Ooh, um, let's highlight a creative. Let's highlight a creative. Uh, our boy here, Jared, uh, found a really interesting, uh, uh, I guess, in similar post that uh, we kind of talked to recently. Obviously, the other day we were looking at uh, some awards around underwater photography. We have something here around nature photography. I, you know, we'll have this link down in the description below. There is one creative I really wanted to highlight. Um, really really cool photo we're gonna have it uh right here i assume uh no pressure to the editor uh it's called mist at the swamp it was taken by a photographer by the name of um mr doran talmy now um, is that is that um like kind of there's fog over a swamp or that is the one somebody and who's it, missing somebody out of swamp Somebody who's missing somebody at a swamp. Right, because I was in I was in the swamp the other day, right, Michael, and I was listening to the Photography <laughs> Brothers podcast, and I was in like, the swamp, in the swamp, yeah, uh, doing my doing my frog uh, frog photography out there in the swamp as I do, and uh, you know yeah. I was listening to the Photography Brothers, and I was really thinking like, wow, this is great um, to be getting all of this uh, insight um, from these brilliant photographers. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. I wish Michael was here and we could be discussing photography together. And in that case you were missed. At right. The swamp. Oh, ah, mi ah, okay. Yeah. So this is another one of those that. English things, Jared, this was yeah. missed, missed, <laughs> missed at, the swamp. at the swamp. I really love the story though. It was great. We'll turn it into a short novel, but 
we um really <laughs> talented guy. <laughs> Dor- yeah. Dor- mm-hmm. Doran is yeah. a really talented guy. Really go, uh, really recommend going ahead checking him out. He's even got a book called Greenland Summer Images. Some really stunning images there. Check him out on Instagram. Um, it's basically his first name, last name, just inverse. So tell me Doran. Um, please go check him out. Give him a follow. This guy's got a cr- like criminally low amount of, of followers for the talent that this guy has. Criminally so low. If you don't follow him, then the yeah. photography cops are on the way. We will arrest you. We will show up. Oh, are we with- the photography cops? We well, we have to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do we have budget to hire to hire people? I don't know, man. I'll call. You know I'll get mean? in touch with uh, who's who. You think Doug Ford? Doug Ford, what to be like to be the cop he, or to he'll hire? Have, no, he'll have to deputize us as the photography cops. Oh, oh right. yes. Oh, yes. dude, we got to write this and pitch it. This is a good show. The photography cops. I love this. This is smart, man. Okay. Every Sounds time, good. every time someone tries to record a video in. Uh, vertically and uh oh. you know then the photography oh. cops will be there we will be there every time that you try to have a slr and you don't know how to use manual mode the oh. photography cops are around the corner anytime you take a mirror selfie we will be oh there. don't take a mirror selfie that don't that that's gonna get you photography copped real quick <laughs> That's thirty years in photography prison. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happens in photography prison? You can only Ooh. shoot Nikon. You don't oh. want to drop the Nikon. You don't want to drop the Nikon oh boy. in photography prison. Oh boy. oh boy. All right. Michael's getting blue here. We're gonna have to get out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh tuning in to another episode of the Photography Brothers. Uh episode thirteen, lucky number. 13 uh it's been an amazing experience for me michael super fun i uh, think you had a good time right i had a blast man all right all right uh any other stuff we need to do before we get out of here uh don't forget to follow the photography brothers we're on instagram we're on twitter we're around everywhere um we're gonna do a newsletter thing uh, yes Mike, michael's working on that um there's a link uh in the YouTube description, there's also a link if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes uh, in the episode description where you can sign up for the newsletter and we'll probably be uh, starting that whole endeavor uh, pretty soon because mm-hmm. what everybody wants is a newsletter. No, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll put some, some good resources in there. We'll make it dope. Uh, before we get out of here, I want to thank my dog, Sonia for being quiet during the episode. I want to thank my co-host, Michael, for uh, being a gem as usual and being an inspiring creative. Uh, Check him out on YouTube, Michael Costa Music, uh, if you want to add to that view count, 20K and counting. Probably while we're recording this video, it probably doubled. I'm gonna guess it's at like maybe 40, 50K now um and uh by the time this episode goes up like he's gonna be practically pewdiepie so yes i mean in terms of viewership not uh any other of the things that are wonderful about pewdiepie um we need to thank sydney for editing the podcast and all the wonderful work that she does and we need to thank you guys for watching here on youtube subscribing to the channel and uh following the podcast on all of the platforms and we look forward to seeing you next week no polar bears were harmed in the making of this podcast It's Michael Costa and Jerry P. You know we're talking photography. We're swapping lenses, setting apertures. You know we're also the podcasters.